The tuba. The tuba is the largest of the brass family of instruments. It's also considerably the youngest of that family. It's the baby of the brass section. Uh, it wasn't around for 200 years or more after the rest of the brass section was fully developed. Now, when we play the tuba, we play it in exactly the same way as every other brass instrument ever invented. And by that I mean we produce the sound with our lips like this. Then we add the mouthpiece, which helps to focus the sound. And then we add the instrument, which focuses and amplifies the sound. Now you can see the valves going up and down. The valves mean that I can play chromatically on the instrument. And obviously the other big thing about the tuba is that it is very long. It's probably three times as long as a trumpet, twice as long as a trombone, which means I can play very low. Now the only instruments in the orchestra that can play as low as the tuba can would be the contrabassoon and the string bass. And I'll just play a little bit of the low register. I think you'll agree that's very low. Now within the orchestra, our role is huge. We, we have so many different roles to play that um, composers sometimes don't even know how to place us. Often they ask us for to provide the, the power and depth that a symphonic sound has. Uh, and composers like Hector Berlioz will write for us in a very scary way like he does in his Dies Irae from Symphony Fantastique, which would sound a bit like this. <laughs> Pretty scary, eh? Uh, another way that composers often write for us is when they're trying to inject a little humour because the tuba is invariably quite a funny instrument to play, especially if we play into the lower register. It's, it's basically a long coiled up tube. Now I could tell you the length of this tuba, it's about 18 feet, I could but I have three tubas and they're all different lengths. So that's almost irrelevant, it's just very long. And the longer the tube, generally the lower you can play on that tube. But if you only had a straight tube, you'd only have a series of notes like this. Etc, etc, it's called a harmonic series. So to get more notes than that, or to fill the gaps in, I have four valves on this tuba. Some of my tubas have five and some have six, but this tuba has four valves, one down here, and three on the top. And what they do is they manage to introduce each of these tubes which makes the tube slightly longer. So if I put the second valve down it introduces that little tube there which drops at a semitone. If I put that valve down it adds that tube in which you can see is twice as long so, and it, each valve then adds a bit more tubing which enables me when I combine them as well to fill in the whole chromatic scale. The fourth valve I have tends to come in play in the very low register. And it helps me fill out the very bottom end of the instrument. Um, the tuba is played by vibrating our lips just like every other brass instrument. We've put our lips together and we make it sound like this, like a buzz. Now, if you've been practicing buzzing, as we call it, uh, you can almost play tunes just by buzzing. But when you add the mouthpiece to that buzz, it helps to focus it and gives it a little bit more clarity. It's a little bit like a bumblebee in a jar, an angry bumblebee in a jar. And that vibration then is of the right kind of quality because it's condensed and focused. You add it into the length of tubing, which is my pretty little tuba, and that is focused more but also amplified by the instrument. <laughs> And so that's pretty much how the tuba works. This is my E-flat tuba. In fact, this is my smallest tuba. Uh, as a, actually, I do have Ephonium, which is a tenor tuba. It's like a baby tuba. This is my E-flat with a small bell. I also have an E-flat 
with uh, a bigger bell, which I use probably 50% of the time. I tend to use this tuba for the Berlioz excerpts and things like that. Uh, some tuba players would prefer to use an F tuba instead of a small E flat. It gives it that sort of versatility. Uh, I also have a pretty big C tuba, which is called a contrabass tuba. Uh, I use that for, for example, Prokofiev, Shostakovich, the Big Mahlers, the Lake Bruckners, the Ring. He, all these things were written for a, a very big tuba. Uh, there's also a B flat tuba, which is a tone lower. It does exactly the same role as my C tuba does, so I tend not to bother with it very much. Um, we tend to uh, get, it is often dictated by the composer. You often write contrabass tuba or just bass tuba, and that's often the two ways that it's uh, explained to us. But sometimes, uh, as the player, you'd make that decision yourself, depending on the register. Some, some modern composers write so low or so high, the contrabass tuba would really struggle to play the very high stuff. And equally, yeah, the, the small tubers would really struggle to get into the low register, or certainly wouldn't make the right kind of sound. So the big tuba makes a huge platform of sound, which has serious presence. Uh, it sort of creeps up behind the conductor so he doesn't keep telling you to be quiet all the time. Uh, and this tuba has a much more front to it, a much more impact, um, a lot more edge actually, the way I play it. I regularly take two instruments to a concert. For example, if you have a piece of Berlioz as the overture, you know, a, a Corsair or King Lear, and yet in the second half you've got Prokofiev's Fifth Symphony, they are such different ends of the spectrum. You've got this huge sound you want to make in the Prokofiev, big big tuba presence and sort of big meandering bass lines. Uh, you can't do that no matter how good you are, no matter who you are, you can't do that on a small tuba. You then, but equally, no matter how good you are on your big tuba, you're not going to play Berlioz the way it should be played uh, because it's too high for it. It just would sound rubbish. So you, I regularly turn up with two instruments. The main thing for me is that the tuba is a lot of fun to play. Uh, you can join in in almost any idiom. I like to think of it as fitting in with most anything. And it's a lot of fun. If you've enjoyed learning about the instruments in the orchestra, why not try our iPad app, The Orchestra, featuring Esapekka Salonen and the Philharmonia Orchestra. Fully interactive video playback lets you view the orchestra from all angles, and the revolutionary beat map shows you who is playing where. Follow along with synchronized scores, hear the inside scoop in audio commentaries, and get a 360 degree view of all the instruments. Available for download in the App Store on iTunes.